But a couple of thank yous, though. First off, thank you for coming up and speaking with us. I appreciate it. I'm John Cook, Well County Sheriff. And uh, thank you also for appointing Sam. Uh, great choice. So. is this, um, a couple months ago you came up to Greeley to talk to the combined uh, rotary and uh, the main the focus of the, of the talk was on the oil and gas industry which again I appreciate your stance on that and I thank you for that because it's a very important industry not just for Well County but for the entire state economically so thank you. But you came up and you talked and you mentioned about listening and that was the main I think uh, focus of your talk how you listen to the oil and gas and you listen to the environmentalists and you're able to bring them together and uh, come up with regulations and that one of the gas we live with and the environmentalists we live with. And you made a comment about um, sometimes to get somebody to come that, you, that disagrees with you to come over to your side, you just have to sit there and listen more. And you find that's a way to you know, get them to turn to, you, uh, to your side. And so my question is though, when these gun laws came up, why wouldn't you listen to the sheriffs? Why wouldn't, uh, when a couple of sheriffs wanted to meet with you, you wouldn't listen to them and hear our side of the, uh, uh, the story, or our view of it, but you talked to Mayor Hickenlooper, or, sorry, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, you talked to him a couple times, but you didn't listen to the sheriffs. And I'm just kind of curious about that. Well, let's, let's stick to the facts. I never talked to Mayor Bloomberg. That, again, that's been out in the press and all this stuff, okay. and just for the record, you know, I met Mayor Bloomberg when I was a mayor, and I know him. Uh, I think he's a pretty good mayor, uh, and his, his program, at least as I understood it, and, and Denver participated in it, was to take existing gun laws and enforce them. I don't think, I don't think he originally proposed any more than that. His more activist stuff in the last few years, uh, you know, we haven't, the state hasn't participated in it, he hadn't. Uh, you know, I would say in, in the gun stuff that we uh, certainly could have done a better job. And I think that the, I didn't, and this is, I'm not defending this, there's no, I didn't find out that the sheriffs were trying to talk to me until a week afterwards, or 10 days afterwards. By that time, all the, whatever was going to hit the fan had hit it. Uh, uh, I certainly still, you know, and I'm happy to sit down anytime you want to, I mean, universal background checks. I'll tell you the, the funny story. This, and it is a weird, I think we screwed that up completely. And I think, we did a disservice to you and a disservice to ourselves. You know, we spent, no one, everyone lost track of, we spent about $30 million we put into our budget to deal with mental health after the shootings in Aurora. But as I went around the state, this whole thing of universal background checks, I kept hearing uh, uh, Republicans, Democrats, everyone just saying, well, we should you know, not take guns away from anyone, but get, keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. I didn't think, this is how bright I am, I didn't think it was gonna be that controversial. So uh, went ahead and started drawing up the legislation. Uh, and we knew there was a little bit of a problem because we couldn't get any, any Republican co-sponsors. Whereas when I was out there, you know, if you look at my re-election campaign, four of the top 10 Republican donors in the state are on my finance committee. Right? I've always gotten along great with Republicans. And they all thought universal background checks were fine. But the Republican legislators, and, and trust me, Democrats are just, I'm not picking on Republicans. Democrats will lock down just as quick as Republicans. Uh, but the Republicans said, crooks aren't stupid, they're not going to be getting a background check, so why the heck are, are you making us spend 10 bucks and wait around 15 minutes when we're just trying to buy a hunting rifle? And that went on for about three or four weeks, and, and I don't know, I, you know, there are a thousand things going on, there were 10 other issues we were dealing with, I wasn't, uh, I guess I didn't get it uh, clearly enough. I went home one night, my son Teddy, Back then he was about 10 and a half, he was in fifth grade, and he'd had a bad day, and he was complaining, and all of a sudden it took a turn for the worse. He looked at me and goes, Dad, what do you do at work all day that's so hard? Make decisions? I said, well, tell you it's not that easy. He goes, no, no, Dad, get the facts, make a decision, check next. I said, well, Ted, no, it's not that. He said, Dad, get the facts, make a decision, check next. He goes, every day I've got to go into school and learn something completely new I didn't know existed the day before. If I don't get it completely right, my next day is misery because everything's based on the day before. You know, after 10 minutes, this, I said, all right, you're right, fifth grade is harder than being governor. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably some truth there. And anyway, I, went into, I, I woke up the next morning and I realized what I should have said is one of the big problems we have today is we don't all have the same facts. And we don't take the time to listen, right? And, and you know, uh, go get the facts uh, and have that discussion. So I went in that, 
to work that day, and I called up Jim Davis, who's the head of the public, public safety. I said, have we taken the time to get the facts on, on gun safety? Uh, you know, I mean, we got to roughly, they estimated half the gun purchases in 2012. Did we catch anybody? So we went out, and uh, they hadn't done that. So we were forming legislation without basic facts, which I think is a, a bad idea in every case. Uh, it took almost a month to get the facts. By that time, I pissed you guys off. I, you know, they, they already passed legislation uh, that I said I was going to sign. But, but they did finally come back with the facts. And I think this is where, even though it's too late, and, and again, I take responsibility for having done a poor job in that. Uh, in Colorado, again, this is a very small fraction. Of, I, I think it's roughly 1% of all the gun checks catch anybody, right? But there were 38 people convicted of homicide who tried to buy a gun in, in 2012 in Colorado. 133 people convicted of sexual assault, uh, 620 burglars, 1,380 people convicted of felony assault. Usually somebody goes to the hospital. There were 420 ju judicial restraining orders uh, that so-and-so couldn't see their, their ex-boss, their ex-boyfriend, their ex-girlfriend. They tried to buy guns and we stopped them. You know, there were 236 people we arrested for not standing warrant. So to me, even though it's a very small percentage, that seemed like, a, a, again, we're not trying to take guns out of people's hands. It, it seemed like a useful thing to do. The point I'm making uh, is that by the time we got that information, it was too late, right? which we made the decision without having that discussion uh, and without having that information. So, you know, I had, I had a friend when I was growing up who was, who was always a very, always a little bit off kilter from the way everyone else talked. And he always used to look at me and says, if you feel the need for an, uh, if you feel the need for an apology, let this be that, which was his half-assed way of, you know, saying he apologized. I'm happy to say, I, I give you my, I apologize. I don't think we did a good job on, on any of that stuff. And, and uh, we've worked very hard since then to uh, open those doors of communication. And a follow up on that, uh, I don't really agree with you on the background checks, but on the magazine ban, um, you know, there has not been one arrest in the entire state on that, on that statute. So to me, that just proves what a worthless statute that really is. You know, if we have a DUI, if we have a DUI law, um, and you can qualify that, and you can quantify it, you've had this many people arrested throughout the state, thousands, that law is working. Um, when we don't have any arrests on a high capacity magazine, and um, just proves to me that it was a worthless piece of legislation that caused a lot of banks to, uh, for no reason. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't argue that. I think the, I think the, uh, I think a lot of people, if they'd known how much commotion was going to come out of the high capacity magazines, probably would have uh, looked for something different or a different approach. Uh, one of my staff made a commitment that, that we would sign it if it got passed. To be honest, no one in our office thought it would get passed. Would, would get through the legislature. Uh, there were several Democrats that said without question they weren't going to vote for it. Uh, I think the, I'm not, I'm not sure I agree with you that just because you don't arrest someone, the laws don't have meaning. There are lots of laws that we have that are hard to enforce and are rarely, rarely are enforced, but, but set, a, set a precedent, jaywalking. How, when was the last time someone was arrested for jaywalking? Right? Yeah, it's a law because it tries to get people doing something right. The, the, the high capacity magazines, I mean, I understand the Second Amendment right stuff, right? My, you know, my dad grew up from Cincinnati, but my mom was from this old Philadelphia family. They didn't have any money, but they came to, to Philadelphia, and this is direct line uh, in like 1680. But my 10 greats, great, 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 great grandfather was the captain of the first city troop, which was the first militia in the colonies, right? And I, I grew up with a, you know, we under, I understand what a militia does and what it did and what it's supposed to do. Uh, and have always uh, respected the Second Amendment. The, the, the thing with the high capacity magazines was in urban areas. I realize that most of you aren't in urban areas, but in urban areas, that's how police officers get killed. And I get to tell you that the tipping point for me on, on signing the, uh, you know, giving the, uh, going along even after my, one of my staff had committed us to signing it, uh, I, 
you know, once you give your word, you generally, or, or someone who worked for you gives, their, gives your word for you, someone who has the responsibility and the ability to do that, generally try not to, to go back on that. But I looked real hard at that one, but the, the, uh, a couple of police officers, including the police chief in Denver, all said, this is the way police officers die, is these, these kids go around with these high capacity magazines, and generally, I can't remember the number, they went back through the decade from 2001 to 2010, and in those 10 years, the variation each year of police officers killed in the line of duty all across the country, it was between 31 and 41 percent. It was either, one year was 32, one year was 36 percent, but you know, roughly more than a third of the police officers killed in the line of duty with, with magazines more than 15 rounds. Now, did the magazines kill them? No. And, you know, again, if we'd known that there was going to create, it was going to divide the state so intensely, I think we probably would have thought about it twice. But in, in the modern world, you can't have, I think one of the problems, biggest problems facing the country right now is how divided we are on all these things that, as you point out, how important really was it, right? They, they tell me, uh, after the, all the, the kerfuffle, I went back to try and get some facts that we should have had at the beginning. They told me there are roughly 300,000 magazines that carry more than 15 rounds in the state of Colorado already. Right, so how, you know, A, how are you, how's a police enforcement officer ever gonna tell what, which is the old one, the new one? How are you gonna, uh, how much, how big a difference is it gonna make if there are that many? Some kid, some punk kid in Aurora wants to get out there and start spray shooting his neighborhood, which has still happened, right? In, 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 in Aurora, in Denver, in Colorado Springs. Uh, it's not like they're gonna have a hard time finding the magazine. Yeah. 